Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's City Council meeting. Uh, today is Monday, February 7th, and again, we'd like to welcome all of you here uh, tonight. Uh, we'd like to start with a roll call of tonight's uh, City Council members who are here. Council members Intamin? Here. Erpenbach? Jameson? Here. Litz? Here. Rolfing? Here. Aguilar? Anderson? Brown? I'm here. Thank you, City Council. We do have five members present, and that is enough to conduct the city's business, so we thank all of you for being here tonight. We would like to start off uh, this City Council meeting as we do with all of them, and that is with, uh, with a prayer. We are so fortunate tonight to have uh, Pastor Dennis, Dennis Thomas of the Free Methodist Church here in Sioux Falls. Uh, he will lead us with the invocation, and then after that, if you could just remain standing and we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Uh, Pastor, welcome. Thank you. For the Lord is good, and his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Our Lord and our God, we acknowledge you as our creator, as our redeemer, as our sustainer. We ask you to give us grace to submit to your lordship. We ask you to forgive us when we haven't. We thank you that you are the unseen hand behind our blessings. And we thank you that you have overseen this city to bring it to what it is today. We thank you and we still need your presence with us, your grace, your mercy, your wisdom. We ask for your continued leading upon this council and upon this community in which we live. We ask this in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Again, I'd like to welcome you to tonight's meeting. Uh, for those of you that uh, you could hear during the Pledge of Allegiance, we do have some special guests here tonight, and I would like to recognize them uh, with, with your permission. Uh, we have the uh, PAC 361 uh, Scout Troop here. They are led by uh, John Mills, and if uh, the PAC could please stand, we'd appreciate it. We'd like to recognize you. Welcome. John, thanks for leading that, that group. And uh, young men, thanks for the, uh, being so great with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. We could hear you up here in, in real, real uh, fine fashion, so thank you. Uh, we are going to start with uh, tonight's uh, meeting with uh, approval of tonight's consent agenda. Can I have a motion to approve that, please? So moved. Let's. Second, Entman. Thank you. Councilor Litz has made a motion to approve tonight's consent agenda. It was seconded by Councilor Entman. Uh, any commentary on that? We could have a roll call vote, please. Council members Intamin? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Litz? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Brown? Yes. Thank you. That is passed 5 to 0. Now moving on to approval of tonight's regular agenda. Move to approve. Litz. Second. Jameson. Councilor Litz has made a motion to approve. It was seconded by Councilor Jameson. Uh, any discussion on that? Hearing none, a motion, please, to, or uh, a roll call vote, please. Sorry. Council members Intamin? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Litz? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Brown? Yes. Thank you. That is also passed 5 to 0. Uh, this is an opportunity for anybody in the audience uh, to speak to the City Council. Uh, we'd ask you to keep your comments to five minutes or less, if you wouldn't mind, uh, as well as it, it is not a question and answer period, but really an opportunity for you just to, uh, to speak your mind uh, to, to the women and the men of the City Council. Anybody like to come forward? Scout group? Scout troop? No? Okay, great. Come on. Welcome. If you could just state your name, please. Tim Stanga. Welcome, Mr. Stanga. How are we doing tonight? Great, thank you. Got some questions from uh, some people in town. <clears throat> um, one had been brought up about the sidewalk cleaning. There's been, what, around 700 complaints or more about uh, sidewalks not being cleaned. And they're just wondering that uh, does that 
go with the city sidewalks too, or is it just the uh, taxpayer sidewalks because the city sidewalks aren't good at all? They're not clean. And they'd like to see something done different, you know, on the city sidewalks versus just the personal sidewalks that they have to shovel in front of their house. They'd like them to be done too, just as they're, they're just looking at, is there a different law for the city where we enforce the ones for the uh, people that pay taxes and the city doesn't have to clean their sidewalks. That's what they're asking. Um, another one uh, came out and said, um, about the arena, um, it was stated on TV about three, four weeks ago that before the Rascal Flats concert that uh, the person that's running the arena came out and said that uh, he can get any act out at the arena, whether it's big or small. And this person came out and asked me, well, we've been told that the arena has outlived its its growth and, and uh, we need a new event center to uh, get these big acts in. And he says, you know, who do we believe? He said, do we believe the person that's running the arena that says that he can get any act in there that he wants? Or do we believe that we're told that the arena isn't big enough and we need another bigger facility so we can get bigger acts in? Told him, I said, I'd come and ask that question because I want to know the same. I want to know the answer, too. I'm just curious on if uh, if the arena needs something like a new scoreboard, that it's been said that the scoreboard is so out of date that you can't buy parts for it. Is the scoreboard on order, or is that put on the back burner until we get the entertainment center? I think that uh, if there's some stuff that has to be done at the arena that has to make it more feasible for that place to run and operate, that the money should be spent on the citizens' building. And that's, that's the way I look at it. If that's my building, that's your building, it should, it should be brought up to date. So that way we can keep it full. Last uh, basketball uh, game I went to, it was probably about maybe 3,000 people. My suggestion, and I don't know how far this will go, but uh, the last 10 rows all the way across should be $2 seating. That way you've sold, seat, you've sold tickets. You're going to have people sitting in them seats, and people are going to go get something to eat. They might go down and get a beer. They might go down and get a pop. There's people sitting in them seats. That's one way to bring revenue in. And plus, it's being able to bring people to the facility, and it's being used. I guess what I'm looking at is when we come up to an entertainment center and we want to, say, we want to go down from 12,000 seats down to 8,000 seats down to 6,000 seats, wouldn't it be more feasible to just go to the arena and have your function at the arena because it wouldn't, the arena is going to be cheaper to... Uh, either lease out or have my event versus the entertainment center. Last but least, I had uh, some elderly people state that uh, the city can uh, jack up their sewer rates and their water rates all they want, but they're going to use less water. And uh, the city's going to probably see that. And uh, that's sort of a catch-22. You can raise the rates. People are going to use less. You're going to bring in less revenue. And uh, that's the way they look at it. So one other thing. I came last Monday for Forward Sioux Falls. It says how uh, Forward Sioux Falls has helped better a, uh, build a better community. They were talking about that uh, it was a little over 50% of our college educated people that are graduating, only over 50%. My question to this group, and, and they asked for $300,000 from the city, and it's coming from the, the counselors, that uh, I would like to know, first, first we gotta get our high schoolers to graduate. I'd like to know what they're doing on, the, on uh, getting kids to help kids graduate 12th grade first, before we're worried about how many kids 
are not graduating out of college or finishing their college education because of either financial reasons or what else. But I, I, that sticks right there. You gotta get through kids through high school before they're gonna go to college. And what are we doing that these kids aren't getting it? So I'd like to have you guys think about that before you give them that $300,000. Second reading, an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, a major amendment, petition number 2010-1102 to Chapter 15.45.070, Plan Development Districts at the southeast corner of East 57th Street and South MacArthur Lane, amending the Southern Hills Plan Development District Subarea Regulations. Planning Commission recommends approval. Good evening. I am Mike Cooper, representing Planning and Building Services. Uh, this is a petition by hy V to allow the future relocation of their gas dispensing station, uh, which is currently near 57th and Cliff Avenue. They have submitted a proposed development plan that would shift this to the west near 57th and MacArthur Lane. This particular location that had been previously considered for a KFC store, uh, it does allow retail uses, and they've had extensive neighborhood meetings to talk about this change in use. And there will, we have a recommendation by the Planning Commission for approval of this request. We're not aware of any neighborhood opposition to moving the gas dispensing station over to this particular area. The current gas dispensing area will then eventually become additional parking for the Hy-Vee store. The Hy-Vee has been making substantial investments at, at all of their stores within the city. Um, we have two representatives here tonight if you have any questions, but again, the recommendation for this amendment is to approve. Mike, thank you very much. Is there anyone in the audience uh, who would like to speak to the City Council about uh, this particular uh, item? Welcome. Yes. Darrell Virick, Virick Commercial Real Estate, 5000 South MacArthur Lane, Suite 103. Um, been working on just about everything in that area, two, two of the two corners anyway. So uh, it's a pretty tough neighborhood to get things passed, so everybody's okay with everything that's on the agenda that I know of. So our last meeting where there was no opposition. Mr. Virick, thank you. Thank you. I, Any questions? On the record, have the school board move Howard Wood Field. I'm saying that, what was that again, sir? Have the school board move Howard Wood Field. Okay. <laughs> Anybody else like to speak uh, to this item in the audience? Okay. Uh, City Council, any, any comments on this? I'd like to make a motion to approve at this point. Thank you, Councilor Litz. I'll yes. second that. Councilor Brown has uh, seconded a motion made by Councilor Litz to approve item number 25. Uh, any further questions or comments, City Council? Hearing none, let's, let's vote on this, please. Council members Intamin? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Litz? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Brown? Yes. Thank you. That is passed 5 to 0. Item number 26. Second reading, an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, a major amendment, petition number 2010-1203 to Chapter 15.45.070, Plan Development Districts at 2425 South Shirley Avenue, amending the Meadows on the River Plan Development District, Subarea Regulations. Planning Commission recommends approval. This, this is a petition to allow a drop-in daycare facility within an existing retail building. Dennis Howell, representing River Plaza Incorporated, is the petitioner. Uh, they would be utilizing approximately 3,200 square feet of this tenant space to relocate the Give Me a Break drop-in center. Uh, just to clarify, this facility is currently in operation uh, south of this proposed location. I don't think we explained that correctly at first reading, but the, uh, the existing location is shown on the exhibit to the south. They're looking for a more visible location. This would be closer to some of the retail shops, closer to the movie theater, uh, which they believe would be better for the business. 
It has been successful in this particular area. And again, this would be a daycare center within the existing building. Uh, other uses within this building include Ruby Tuesdays. The hours of operation we've described to you would be Monday through Thursday, 7.30 a.m. to 10 p.m. Fridays, 7.30 a.m. to 11 p.m. And Saturdays, 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. We also have representing the uh, daycare facility here tonight, uh, representation, in case you would have any questions. This also is being recommended for approval by the Planning Commission, and we're not aware of any concerns by neighboring property owners with this request. Mr. Cooper, thank you again. Uh, is there anyone in the audience who'd like to speak to this, to this item, item number 26? Very good, thank you. Uh, City Council, anybody would like to make a motion on this? Move to approve Entman. Second Litz. Councilor Entman, thank you very much for making a motion to approve this. It was seconded by <laughs> Councilor Litz. Is there any further discussion on this item? Hearing none, a vote please. Council members Entman? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Litz? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Brown? Yes. That is passed five to zero. Item number 27. Second reading and ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, rezoning property at South Cover Discovery Avenue and West Browning Street from the RD Residential <coughs> District to the RS2 Residential District, petition number 2010-1206, and amending the official zoning map of the City of Sioux Falls. Planning Commission recommends approval. This is a petition by Steve Melgard, representing the Rocky Ridge Second Edition, which is located on West 12th Street. In this particular situation, there are eight residential lots that are vacant. The zoning currently would allow either single family or twin homes without any public hearings. And the applicant would like to change the zoning so that only single family would be allowed without public hearing. If there ever was a request for twin homes, then that would have to go through further public review. And again, we are not uh, aware of any opposition to this request. The Planning has, Commission has recommended approval. And this is located in the area of South Discovery Avenue and West Browning Street. Mr. Cooper, thank you. Uh, anyone in the audience who'd like to speak to item number 27? Very good, thank you. Thank you. City Council. Move to approve Entman. Second, Litz. Councilor Entman's made a motion to approve item number 22nd. It was seconded by Councilor Litz. Any further discussion? Hearing none, a vote please. Council members Entman? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Litz? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Brown? Yes. That has passed five to zero. Item number 28. A resolution determining the use of a design build contract for the purchase of a playground equipment at Dowley and Southern Hills Parks, Southern Vistas Parks. Yes. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, City Council, Kelby Maris with Parks and Recreation. This resolution would allow us to once again use the design build process for the installation of playground equipment. The budget for this, for these two structures, is approximately $117,000 uh, from the city. We have received, uh, or we will be receiving uh, some funds from the PTOs at uh, Rosa Parks Elementary School and Pettigrew Elementary School to assist us with the uh, installation of these structures. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Mr. Maris, thank you. Any questions or comments? City Council? I just Council, want to say, Council I, Litz. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just want to say this is an excellent example of the uh, PTA stepping up here uh, for funding that's not available through the state or the school. Council Litz, thank you. Uh, Yes. Kelby, are these going to have soccer goals? Uh, no, sir. <laughs> no, oh, okay. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, I will move to approve. Second, Entman. Council Brown, thank you very much. And Council Brown has made a motion to approve item number 28 that was seconded by Councilor Entman. Uh, any further discussion? A, a vote, please. Council members Entman? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Litz? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Brown? Yes. Thank you. That is passed five to zero. Item number 29. A resolution advising and giving consent to the appointment of members to certain citizens' boards. Thank you. 
I guess I can uh, I speak to that a little bit. Uh, I do have the opportunity as, as mayor to uh, uh, review certain uh, openings that come, uh, that come with different citizen boards that we have. Uh, one of the things that I let the people know during my campaign and that I'm trying to follow through now that I'm mayor is I am uh, uh, announcing these openings now via press releases as well as putting them in the Argus Leader and uh, different other media stations who are willing to, to do this to try to get new people engaged in city government. Uh, it's been a wonderful thing. Uh, we are getting more and more people that are applying for, for these roles. Uh, the bad news is that um, there's, just, there, there's only one or two openings for some of these, but the good news is that uh, we are getting more and more uh, names that we can, we can utilize for different committees uh, in the future as well. Uh, at this point in time, if there's any questions from any of the city councilors about any of these people, I'd be happy to, uh, to answer those. And if not, uh, I'll take a motion to, to approve these. Councilor Antiman. Mr. Mr. Mayor, just uh, one point here. On the CVB board, on the, there's two members that you need yet to appoint uh, as part of the bid board that we have here. And that would be Terry Ellis Schmidt, who is executive director, and then whoever you choose from the city council to re represent the council on the bid board also. Very good. So there's Thank two you. left. I just wanted to remind you of that. Thank you. And I am very excited about this, too. In this process, I think this is going to be great for the city and those that have volunteered to be part of it. And then thank you very much for helping get this accomplished. Well, Councilor Anderman, it was your leadership uh, along with uh, some others, but it was you leading the charge on this one. So thank you very much as well. And it's going to be a big bang for the, for the city. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Oh. Councilor uh, Brown. Could we, before we vote, just have the, the clerk read who Please. the citizens are and on what boards they'll serve for the benefit of the public and to recognize these people who get nothing else from the city. <laughs> Councilor Brown, thank you. You're right. Uh, these people are just donating their time and their talent, and there is no treasure, uh, or they, they don't get paid a dime. Uh, so thank you, Councilor Brown. Let's, let's recognize these folks. Alfonso Brito, Multicultural Center Board. Nate Welch, Washington Pavilion Management, Inc., Board of Directors. Robert Grady, Sioux Falls Ice and Recreation Center Board. Wendy McDonald, Sioux Falls Ice and Recreation Center Board. Lee Howell, Sioux Falls Convention and Visitor Bureau Business Improvement District. Karen Masterson, Sioux Falls Convention and Visitors Bureau Business Improvement District. Jan Grunewald, Sioux Falls Convention and Visitors Bureau Business Improvement District. Sarah Bogdanov, Sioux Falls Convention and Visitors Bureau Business Improvement District. Mike Miller, Sioux Falls Convention and Visitors Biz Bureau Business Improvement District. Shales Patel, Sioux Falls Convention and Visitors Bureau Business Improvement District. Craig Pomeranke, Sioux Falls Convention and Visitors Bureau Business Improvement District. Chrissy Spoo, Sioux Falls Convention and Visitors Bureau Business Improvement District. Mark Wallstrom, Sioux Falls Convention and Visitors Bureau Business Improvement District. Mr. Mayor? Yes, C Councilor Rolfing. Thank you. Um, I just want to take this moment to uh, say thank you for um, being uh, open to putting these, um, um, well, these openings up in the, uh, in, on the email and things like that so that we can get more community involvement in these. I know that hasn't been done before, but uh, uh, I think that's a wise, wise thing to do, and we're getting um, many, many more people I know that are going to be involved in, in the community. And any time we get that kind of wide, uh, wide opinions, uh, different opinions and things, it's only going to make, uh, make our city government better. So thank you very much. Councilor Rolfing, thank you very much. I, I appreciate it. To uh, you know, for example, the Multicultural Center, for example, uh, when we put that out uh, to let the people know, we received almost 50 different app people who wanted to be on that board. And even though we, we're only selecting one right now, we'll take the other 49 names and we'll, put, we'll give those to, uh, for example, Christy at the Multicultural Center, and, and hopefully she can utilize that time and talent for other committees. So thank you very much, Councilor Rolfe. Councilor Antiman. I move that we approve the, the uh, board appointments. Second and second. Please. There's been a motion by Councilor Antiman to approve uh, these board appointments. It was seconded by Councilor Rolfing. Uh, any further discussion? A vote, please. Council members Antiman? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Litz? Yes. Rolfing? <coughs> yes. Brown? Yes. That has passed 5 to 0. Item number 30. 
<laughs> report of the January 31st, 2011 Notice of Transfer app Appropriations within major organizational units. Can I get a motion to approve, please? Move to no, approve. Oh, I'm sorry. No. Oh, really? Just motion to adjourn. Well, that makes it easy. <laughs> uh -huh. City Council, any further comments? I guess we don't need a motion to approve there, Councillor Litz. Councillor Litz? I'd like to uh, promote uh, amongst my colleagues here the, the Fed Gazette. Uh, comes in our mailboxes uh, quarterly, I think, or every, every two months or something. And it's some excellent reading, and uh, it may help uh, uh, disperse or shore up some of the opinions that you have about what's going on in the economic world today. So I'd encourage you to read it and get informed. Thank you. Well, I would like to thank all of you for being here tonight. You could have easily been anywhere else uh, warm in your house or apartment or where, and you chose to be here with your city council uh, and the mayor, and, and I, really, I really respect that. Uh, young people, go out and be the next city councilors uh, someday, if, if you don't mind. We'd, we'd certainly welcome it. Could I get a motion to, to adjourn, please? Moved. It's been a motion by Councilor Rolfing to, a, and it has been seconded by Councilor Jameson to adjourn tonight's meeting. No further discussion. A roll call vote, please. Council members Intiman? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Litz? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Brown? Yes. Thank you. That is passed 5 to 0. This motion has been adjourned. Thank you, Sioux Falls. <laughs>